Hello, 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 everyone. I'm Dr. Tamara Beckford, and I am here to welcome you to Inside the EntreMD Business School show. Today, we have a wonderful guest, one of our superstars from the EntreMD Business School. I am going to have her introduce herself in full regala. She better do it that way. <laughs> uh, yes, there we are. Alrighty, Dr. Alexandra, tell us all about yourself, all about where you are, and all about your business. Go ahead. Okay, wonderful. Be my pleasure. I'm really honored to be contributing to this show. I love the Entree MD Business School. Mm -hmm. About me, I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm trained as a family medicine doctor, but for over 10 years now, I have been a relationship and intimacy coach an intimate marriage expert known as the intimacy doctor. And I help educated professionals learn how to feel closer, more connected, heat up their marriage, both in the bedroom and outside. Because when our primary romantic relationship feels fulfilling and juicy, well, all of life benefits and we get to leave a legacy that I think most people don't tend to focus on. Of course, we want to leave a legacy in terms of values and financial mm -hmm. abundance and things of that sort, but there's an opportunity to leave an amazing legacy in modeling what a good, happy, connected, joyful, passionate, intimate marriage is. When we leave our children that legacy, mm -hmm. Well, that changes generations. Absolutely. And where is your business? Where are you located right now, I should say? Okay, well, I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area. I live mm -hmm. close to Napa, and I'm here in my home office. Mm -hmm. I didn't really emphasize my location because actually since 2017, I've been working virtually exclusively. Before the pandemic, when I would ha have a new client, I would say, have you ever heard of Zoom? Because I need to explain how that works. <laughs> but at some point in 2020, I thought, how ridiculous. I can eliminate that question from yes. my conversations. And so I do. I have clients currently in Dubai, in London, and throughout the US, in Peru. Um, and uh, I also do co-host luxury retreats, which are of course in person. And I do some workshops in my local community, but the majority of my work is virtual. Love it. So she is located physically in California, but she's available to help with intimacy all over the world. All right. <laughs> yes. And actually I should add, since you asked me to tell about me that I have a book, Uncompromising, mm -hmm. Intima Uncompromising Intimacy. My podcast is highly ranked. The in It's in the top 1.5th percentile of all podcasts globally, mm -hmm. the Intimate Marriage Podcast. I do a lot on social media, but I really wanted to emphasize my podcast and my book because that is how a lot of people find me. And I hear from people in the US military all around the world. I hear from people from other countries and certainly throughout the United States who are able to benefit. And I don't always hear about it, but when I do, <laughs> I'm always grateful. Oh, wow. So that's a great segue when you're telling me about all the places that everyone has been able to grasp and get in contact with you based on your podcast and your book. Now, when we think about the way that we're able to really touch the lives of others, it really comes back to one of those things within a business, right? Which is some of what we call our wins, because the wins are like, I was able to touch the lives of others. Now, tell us in the last 12 months, what were some of your biggest wins, the tangible wins that you've had within the last 12 months? Okay, wonderful. So I really have two goals and I have wins in both of those. Mm -hmm. One goal has to do with my impact. Mm -hmm. I don't have a specific number in mind, but I really want to change the cultural narrative around long-term relationships so that instead of people thinking it's basically where passion goes to slowly or quickly die off, <laughs> that people understand the richness and possibility and potential and just how nourishing a long lasting relationship can be. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, I want people to learn to think about that differently, encounter the influence from movies and 
TV and porn and religious institutions and all of the places that tend to teach something very different than what I teach. Mm -hmm. And so in terms of wins with impact, my podcast has grown. I think one of my biggest wins in 2023 mm -hmm. is that I published my book, Uncompromising Intimacy in 2019. Mm -hmm. And I, I, refer to it on social media a few times a month, but I continue to make sales. I sell a copy pretty much one or two every day of the week without oh. do it just like runs along. So that is a big win that I think is a result of where I'm putting my attention and how I'm showing up and my, the mm -hmm. increase in my authority results in people then wanting to purchase my book and the way it's also positioned with SEO on Amazon. Like there are a lot of contributing factors, but one of my big wins is that I continue to sell my book, which is something that then people can learn from. And sometimes mm -hmm. they reach out to become clients, but it's a big win to continue to sell my book four or five years after it was published with very little Absolutely. effort, but a natural consequence of all the other things I'm doing. Absolutely. And being able to now sell your book, if you think about it, you're saying one to two book a day. I yeah. was looking for the word week, <laughs> but it's just like, no, one to two book a day. That's a big impact when you want yeah, to. Yeah, it's like five to seven books per week, I guess. Yeah, yeah you're, you're having the impact that you intended to and you have a couple different vehicles to do so so you have your podcast and as you mentioned you have your book so when you're thinking about one to two book being sold a day or even if it's five to seven a week that's five to seven more families and couples that you are you're impacting you know so that's a huge impact over the span of one year especially because it's an it's a big impact with no additional effort because the book was written and published and I recorded the audible version all in 2019 and early 2020. So I'm not mm -hmm. doing any, there's no more of my time or energy that goes mm -hmm. into creating it, but it continues to have an impact. So that's a big tangible win. And mm -hmm. another tangible win is that, as I said, I've been coaching for, well, since 2013. So mm -hmm. for over 10 years, um, for the first time ever, I set a financial goal and I met it. Now, I feel very good about my revenue, but mm -hmm. it's like, it's a little more random. It's not that I set the goal and then make it happen. But as a result of different things that I've learned in the Entree MD Business School, in Q4, I joined the school in Q3, mm -hmm. and in I did a bunch of things to set me up for this. And then in Q4, I set, a high revenue goal and I met it. And so I'm really happy to have that revenue, but really the biggest goal is that I figured out how to set a goal and then how to exactly. actually make it happen. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, being able to set a goal and see it come to fruition, it there are a couple layers of elatement that happens. Like, yes, I hit the goal, but then, the underneath that is when you realize I have now become this person that can set a goal and follow through. And then once you realize and you've unleashed that person underneath, you can't really go back unless you intentionally do so. You now know that, yes, I am the type of person that can set the goal, follow through. And these were the steps that I did. And so I can definitely do this again. Now that leads us to the intangible wins that you've had within the last 12 months in your business. What are some intangible wins that you can tell us? You know, I always enjoyed my business, but I love it even more now. And I think one of the things has to do with focus. Like I can serve a lot of different people with a lot of different problems and mm -hmm. I'm glad to be helpful like that's who I am I wouldn't have, I myself wouldn't have gone into medicine if that weren't the case but Absolutely. there's a way in which just like removing anything that isn't really bullseye level like never mind the outer rings that I also can hit I'm mm -hmm. really very very clear in a new way about who I serve and how I want to serve them. So actually just in the last three days, I received two invitations to participate in 
online summits. I didn't know the host of either one. It wasn't through a personal connection, but they found me and thought I would be a really good fit. And for one, the person's audience and message are just completely aligned with mine. And I just said yes, and I feel great about it. And the other one was like, I would have said yes two years ago. Like, there's enough overlap, but really, it's not... a is forced <laughs> 50 percent the right audience so rather yeah. than doing it for the 50 percent that's the right audience i'm now saying no because it just creates drag and unnecessary inertia to navigate the 50 percent where there isn't overlap and i just feel really clean in saying no to more things mm -hmm. and that that's a really significant intangible win because it, it increases my energy and my inspiration Absolutely. to just be that much more clear mm -hmm. in my no and not to have it be, well, you have to get burned out in order to say no. No, I'm doing great and I'm saying no. Oh, wonderful. Isn't that exciting? So you've now gotten laser focused on your ideal client, who you serve. You're so laser focused that opportunities come to you and you can look and snap judgment read, look, okay, yes, this is my ideal audience. Absolutely. I will help this one. Mm, it's not my ideal audience. Only part of it is. And therefore I recognize the extra energy that I would be expending in order to make my content available to sort of help the ones who are not my ideal audience and try to semi serve the ones who are my ideal audience. And you thought, it's not worth it. But I love that you've gotten to that point because it's because you're so laser focused that you can now determine. And you also say, no, I won't use my energy on things that it's not going to serve me at this point because I want to preserve my energy for the things that I want to do within my business. Absolutely. Yeah, because really that the summit that I said no to, mm -hmm. even though this is a different metaphor, it's like it's empty calories. Like that's good if you're starving, mm -hmm. but it's really, I can have gourmet food now and yes. be nourished by it. And I used to say yes, and it was the right thing, but mm -hmm. it's no longer the right thing. And that's a great point. As your business changes, as you evolve within your business, I should say, as you evolve within your business and you become clearer, then you can determine, yes, I no longer need to because the business or you have now evolved. And I love that. So now with that in mind, there are always lessons that we learn because some things work out well and then some things just don't. We at EBS, we just call them lessons. So what are your biggest lessons for the last 12 months within your business? Hmm. I know I should have a ready answer, but I really do need to survey my business for a moment internally. I'm just talking to buy a little time. So <laughs> I think, I think the lesson is that I'm going to say it in the positive mm -hmm. that that the lesson is that there there are the right opportunities, there mm -hmm. are the right connections, there is the alignment, and there's a way in which I I don't need like it's a shift from scarcity to abundance yes. in all regards and. Mm -hmm. I think another way to put it, which is kind of building on what I just shared as, as an intangible win, is that when something's working, it can be really challenging to let it go, even when it's no longer right. Like, I'll use another funny image. Like, if I have a favorite pair of jeans and they're awesome, but then my size changes. Either I lose weight or I gain weight. It doesn't matter for the point I'm making, but mm -hmm. it no longer, they no longer fit. I really need to have my mindset and my emotions catch up with the reality and stop wearing the jeans because they don't look good anymore. Mm -hmm. And so rather than wearing them because they used to be my favorites, it's time to let them go. And I just feel like there are different parts of my business which were suitable while I was doing them and are no longer suitable. But sometimes I haven't recognized that as soon as it's true. And I just mm -hmm. recognize it because I think, oh, 
I really wasted my time on that. I really <laughs> shouldn't have pursued that. I shouldn't have said yes. Mm -hmm. Like that was a mistake. So my my lessons have more to do with where my attention is mm -hmm. than any authentic real failures i would say so they don't look like point. failures to somebody else because yeah. what was the failure i just did the thing and but for me it doesn't fit with where i am in my business now and who mm -hmm. i am in order to go to the next level absolutely and that's a great 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 point that you're making and that are number one, which is why we call them lessons. They're not necessarily failure. It all depends on how you look at it. And even all the top people in business, they said you need to go after things. You need to make um, decisions. You need to make mistakes and like you need to learn from them and then, you know, move on to the next step. So looking back, as you mentioned, the jeans are no longer fitting. I still like the material but they're no longer going to be my favorite jeans because it's not aligned with me anymore. It doesn't fit anymore. And that sometimes happens within our business where either we evolve or we try something out and lo and behold, it didn't work out, but that's a lesson. And now we know that that's not the direction that we're taking the business. And that's how we look at it. Now, when we think about all this, you were able to join this community, as you mentioned, um, Q three of um, 2023. So you've been there within now for where at this recording, we're in 2024, we're at Q1 um, of 2024. So what would you say that, how has the business school or being part of the business school helped you to achieve some of your goals within the last 12 months? I think there are two ways. Mm -hmm. One is that I have done a lot of personal growth trainings and a lot of business trainings, a lot of entrepreneurial mindset work. Just I've, I've been in a lot of different masterminds and different things. And there's a good percentage of what Dr. Una says, which I've heard before, mm -hmm. but the way that she says it, just stating the essence and stripping away all the other stuff like she has clearly penetrated those lessons and the way that she says it i find it really refreshing and inspirational and it's just an amazing model for how as a smart ambitious driven physician we can take what's available to everybody but really make it work for us in this very profound way. So that's one thing. And then the other thing, which is related but different, is being part of the community. I think, mm -hmm. I, I don't think that I ever really imagined that I could be in a community of like-minded people. And by like-minded people, I mean, physicians, but not only physicians, I mean, entrepreneurs, but not only entrepreneurs, I mean, people who care about their work and service, as well as their family life and relationships. Mm -hmm. It's it's like the whole combination of people who are driven. And I have to say, it's astounding to see people transform within the container of the mastermind like that probably propels me more than anything else to see people six months ago like where they are and where they are now mm -hmm. it's not typical that people change <laughs> like that but there's something in the blend of like the alchemical nature of the of the community as well as specific content and the fact that the people in the container are driven and open to learn things that they haven't known before mm -hmm. so i just want to say really it's the container like the community but i spoke first about dr una because i think that those two are related her capacity mm -hmm. to create positive culture in the community mm -hmm. is just a really rare exquisite reality <laughs> It's the skill set, it's the reality, it's the essence of who she is. Now, with that in mind, you know, you're going to have some people who are on the fence and they're deciding and they're listening to this and they're saying, mm, I don't really know. Really, is it truly like that in there? What would you say to those who are thinking of joining us? 
Okay, well, I would say that I doubted it too. I didn't <laughs> doubt Dr. Una, but I doubted the community until I joined. Mm -hmm. And I would say that if you are ambitious, willing to learn things you don't know, and not even know what you need to learn about, and you either take action or will become an action taker, then this will be your experience too. But if you're more like cross your arms, you know, prove it to me, mm -hmm. or you feel like you're a physician, you have worked so hard, you just want to be rescued by your kind of entrepreneurial Prince Charming, then I still think you'll be inspired, but I don't think you'll have the experience that I've described. I love it. If you're looking for your to relax and to just be spoon fed by your entrepreneurial Prince Charming, then maybe this is not the place. However, if you know that you want change and you want to be inspired, you want to be around other change makers, you want to be lifted up by other change makers, you want to recognize and get a positive push forward to get you from the starting block or even to get you moving to the next level, then this is a place for you. Is that safe to say? <laughs> that is safe to say. And I think I just want to add one thing, which is Absolutely. that is true if you don't have a business and you don't know what you want to do. Mm -hmm. That is true if you have a business and it's been just sort of spluttering along. That mm -hmm. is true if you have a well-established business and you want community and inspiration and just to hear other people in order to have a sense of how to get to the next level. I mean, I was already making multiple six figures when I joined and my income has gone up, gone up and I like like I have access to a juiciness about <laughs> business that I just didn't have before I joined the Entree MD Business School. Well, you heard it here. You get access to this juiciness <laughs> here within the Entree MD Business School. So we just gave you a glimpse of the juiciness as Dr. Alexandra Stockwell so aptly described. So if you are on the outside and you're trying to decide if you should come on the inside. We just gave you a glimpse of what it's like to be inside the Entree MD Business School. So if you're out there, won't you come join us? I'm Dr. Tamara Beckford, and you have been listening to Inside the Entree MD Business School Show. We're looking forward to seeing you on the inside. <laughs>